Hello. Let me, uh, let me zoom out. Alright. Just making sure everything's unmuted. Volume seems to be good. Looks like music set a good setting. Uh, actually, a little bit lighter than usual. That's about right. Alright. So, today is Cheshire Cat, as far as our prompts. I'll do a quick little tour of Wonderland just for anybody. Um, who was here yesterday, so you can see uh, a couple minor things have started changing. Uh, this tree got a little bit thicker because I thought I was going to do a branch out and have the cat in the tree, so that way it's closer to the foreground, and that way the cat would be larger. But I didn't like that. You can still see a faint little line here for, for where the branch was. My, uh, so it's probably a little bit lower. Go ahead and tilt just a little adjustment. It's a little sideways, but close enough. Anyways, so a little bit darker. You can see the disruption where that that branch was coming across. I was just not happy with what I was doing to the composition, so I decided to. Go back to leaving this as a broken off tree. It's just a wider broken off tree now. It has roots. Uh, moving on, just knock down the pencil lines for the edges of the table. Uh, got a glaze decided for a gray floor, so it appears to be uh, probably like stone. Uh, the header has a face penciled in. And we have a Cheshire cat here. So I think that's it for changes. I'm going to bump the ISO back up where it'll show up better for putting color on the page. And I still need to do quite a few more glazes here and there as we're working on depth and whatnot. But uh, focusing on the Cheshire Cat today and then we'll, we'll hop around a little bit. Also going to just knock back the pencil a touch for the face. Just a touch. That should be good. Alright. And just in case I missed any eraser skewings. And up here, I can see a few from when I had the branch up here. It's like I kept tweaking things and I was like, mm, still not happy. So, that's, that's how we got to where we're at. I need to try to remove some of this pencil from our flamingo here. I want to see about. I need any touch-ups over there later. I want to give myself plenty of places where I can jump around and pop in some detail if need be. Where as time allows, I should say. Alright, so for our Cheshire Cat, I did a uh, pink and purple for the Disney classic, and then two shades of blue, like a teal and a deeper bluish gray. For the uh with Tim Burton. And I've been trying to figure out who who's winning in my book. I do like both portrayals. I really hadn't decided on color, so here we are in trouble again. Figure out color as we uh as we go. And also I'm correcting a minor palette issue off lens. I had a wash that was still a little bit too wet before I put my palette away. I was working out of the house yesterday. And you can hear gaming going on in the background. Let's 
just driving me nuts having these particular colors run together. It's like, uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't want my Hyrule Crimson to have uh, this Pyrrhaline Violet and um, an Acridone Gold mix invading it. Nope. It's an incredibly good mix for skin tones, the uh, Pyrrhaline Violet and an Acridone Gold. That is another project going on in the background. Actually, I'm figuring out the Cheshire Cat's color, which I should probably zoom in so you can see more detail. I think I'm going to just be laying down a couple, a couple glazes here and there. Why is there all this stuff around my rabbit? And getting into that early maroon. Fantastic shadow color for anything red. decided to go with the same playlist from yesterday because really I think most of it works out well There'll probably be a few tracks that I would remove from it when I download it as a playlist I've been just streaming all of these directly from the uh, the site so far and that is something I will change I'm able to go ahead and download them. I don't want that pooling too much. And here I am practically off camera for most of that. Here's our white rabbit. Going to leave the front of the vest alone for now while this edge is drying. It only connects here, but that's enough where I, I don't want that trouble. Uh, we'll get in uh, some of the vest being black later. And grabbing the Princeton Velvet Touch Round 1. I'm going to grab just a touch of the neutral tint. And finish just indicating where the back of our bunny is. In short little strokes. Kind of indicate fur. And a touch over here. I'm basically providing some outlines so when I go ahead and erase these um, pencil lines, they'll be taken care of. Same thing for our watch face, even. I could actually give that a little bit of a bluish tone. So it's mostly neutral tint. I grabbed a touch of the. Um, Phthalo blue, uh, turquoise. I think I'm just going to keep the white phthalo blue turquoise. I should just look it up. Ooh. Never once in a while this will stick to my hand unexpectedly. Um, just give the press a quick rinse because I want to make sure I don't have any hard edges. So I'm just going to soften those edges with some water and do a quick blot. I'll go back to slightly more gray on that side. 
I don't feel like that blue is quite right. A little too much. That's okay. Let's move on to a nice shadow tone. I have just a touch of the Benacridone Burnt Orange and a bit of sepia. It's just going over here. I'll give this a little bit more form now. And same thing, a little bit of nuts. Yep, have some shading going on with our little pocket watch chain. That I'm going to have to cover with masking fluid later when we go ahead and start adding the, uh, the background washes. That's pretty dry. So, let's see. So that initial wash is pretty dry. I think I'll go in and add some more of that neutral tint. I've been going with neutral tint a lot just because I don't have the background in and the background's going to, to push stuff to be warmer or cooler, so I can go ahead and include those colors um, as as more background gets added with without the neutral tint shifting it incorrectly. Since it's a really flexible color. So I'm going to go with a fairly light wash. For this, I don't want to go full saturation right away, especially to help put in the details of this vest, like the uh, the buttons. Funny, I got so excited to work on the Cheshire Cat, and I didn't stop to think about color. This little edge is a little wetter than I had the rest of it, but it's actually closer to the value I was thinking for this initial wash. A little, little bit stronger than I planned. I'm just grabbing some of that water, bringing it over here. That's all right. I'll go in and work on more form later. We're just leaving him as a, a flat wash, and we'll go ahead and indicate shadow and light later. I'm just glad there's 
more color on him, and he's just about caught up with, uh, with where the rest of the image is. So, that's not bad. I'm going to kind of imply a little bit of his toes. Alright, so stop to uh, grab a quick drink of the old energy drink over here. And I don't know, seeing if maybe that'll uh, get some gears going for what color this cat should be. And the Cheshire cat seemed to just be an exaggerated form of a cat with a, a really large smile if you go back to the the tenual illustrations uh, my laptop's running a little bit on the warm side you might hear a little bit of distortion with the uh, with a fan. Yeah, it just mentions constantly grins and could disappear and reappear whenever it likes. All right, then. So I think that's about all the puttering around that I want to do with our uh, white rabbit here. As I do want to work on our Cheshire cat. I'm just slowly moving him forward a bit and probably over a little bit so I can zoom in a bit more and get my pencil out of the way while I'm uh, going back to the um, number one round velvet touch and this one's a bit finer uh, as far as the scale that we're working on now I would go in and do a lot of details with the spotter brush I don't know, I'm kind of torn. So I feel like maybe I'll, uh, put her around with some color. Because I have the Jabberwock largely in, like, cobalt teal blue and Payne's gray, I'm really 
leaning against similar colors for uh, the Cheshire Cat, like uh, the, the Tim Burton colors, basically. It's probably a slightly less vibrant blue because of the Payne's Blue. Um, not Payne's Blue, Payne's Gray glazing. Um, so I'm not exactly in love with that. So let me tell you, drawing this cat with the cross legs was maddening. <laughs> uh, just to put that lightly, because um, how their legs are shaped, they're, they're shaped very similar to, to the rabbit here. Um, slide him up a little bit, and you see how you know, this longer section of the foot, and then you have the, this strange upper leg shape. So I, hopefully I, I captured that with the... Uh, the Cheshire Cat. I went slightly cartoonish with them, but I felt like that was okay because of the exaggerations with the uh, with the character in general. I don't know. I really like the uh, the blue smoke effect. So that's something that. That I really liked. I, I do like a lot of purple. I'm kind of leaning towards gray and an outlandish color for a cat for the stripes. And then keeping with the uh, keeping with the the blue, which will probably be the uh, the thalo blue turquoise. Which you know what I am going to look that up. While I'm being indecisive about colors and musing a bit, just to <laughs> go ahead and say the color correctly later. Alright, and confirmed, it is Thalo Blue Turquoise. So I'm going to stop messing that up because I've been flubbing that quite a bit. Didn't break out the uh, my collection of tubes to go ahead and confirm. Uh, silliness. Not really a fan of pink. I used a lot of the Carbazole Violet, so it's one of those... Even in the hat next to the cat. Uh, I think I'm going to start mixing and playing. We're gonna do... I don't know if I'm going to go... Neutral tint for the greys. And I'm also going to do a little test. With a... Uh, a touch of paint gray. I want to have a little sample of that. I'm definitely going to go cooler. Uh, even though I kind of feel like giving you guys a little swatch of the sepia so you can see how different they are. I've not gone quite so strong with my neutral tint. But just a touch. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the neutral tint pigment. There, you can see the uh, the three main neutrals that I've been jumping between to, to go ahead and neutralize, and you, you can just as easily mix your own neutrals. I picked a lot of colors in this palette specifically for their capability of neutralizing. Kind of in a 50-50 uh, on going with a kind of like a magenta tone purple. So somewhere between the Quinn Lilac and the Quinacridone um, Quinn Violet. 
So this is the Quin Lilac. It's Quin Quinacre and Magenta and in a lot of other brands. Uh, Daniel Smith had already put out a Quinacridone Magenta before the Lilac. So that's where that color name came from. We have the Quin Violet. I'll just let them kind of mix and mingle on our swatches here. Kind of leaning there. I don't know. It's like, I don't mind that color. But I also don't love that color either. Uh, for, for the Cheshire Cat. Like, I, it's a great color for florals. I, I re really like it for that. But... Meh. I don't know why I get so indecisive about color. Color is one of the things that I have, like, the most fun working with. The other idea was, let's head to the greenish blue place. So maybe like, this is just straight up phthalo green blue shade. But I also really like the uh, phthalo turquoise blue. It's a Wonderful, vibrant color. Maybe even go somewhere in between. I'm trying to encourage these to mix because they went on so dry. I do kind of like that. that. That's the same uh, color mix that I used for the Mad Hatter's hat. Just kept going with the both of them back and forth to get a really deep teal. Hmm. Here we can go more purple. You guys will have to let me know if you're getting bored <laughs> of this. Jeez. Uh, decisions, decisions. I mean, it's it's only like a main character. And this mix is a bit of the dioxazine violet with a bit of the uh, Quinn lilac. But yeah, I'm definitely set on gray for the main body. I think maybe I'm going to start... Maybe going to start doing um, the gray shading for the body and we'll leave these stripes alone. I think I can paint around it. Because, yeah, I'm just looking at these swatches and I'm like... It still doesn't feel... I feel like it's been confirmed. Like, I don't feel like I've solved anything. Um, in the interest of a little bit of variety, because I have done so much neutral tint in shading a good bit of uh, characters here, I am going to lean on the paints gray for this one. So whatever color goes with. Should be fine, because I'm generally thinking of colors that are on the cooler side. I really wanted to do some really cute contrast with these, uh, with the little toe beans. Maybe I'll do those, I don't know. You know, who says he has one color of stripes? Maybe that's the, the problem. Maybe I'm just assuming too much of regular cat behaviors. I really don't feel like I can paint around all of these little stripes. Well... 
I didn't unpack my uh, masking fluid. I do have some, but at this rate, it's going to take a bit to dry. That's assuming this paper holds up to it. I'm I'm very suspicious of paper right now. I haven't tested a lot of papers with masking fluid because I don't tend to use it very often. I think that's my masking fluid. Yeah. yeah I have some uh, masking fluid pens. I got this set, which I need to zoom out in order for you to see anything. So I'll go ahead and zoom out. I got a set of uh, masking fluid. And all of these tips are supposed to be really fine. I'm going to try to slide them down. Let's see if I come out. see how fine this goes. Interesting. I have a, uh, a pin to go back into the, uh, the tip. So that's reassuring because masking fluid, it can clog, it can gunk up. It is, it is a unique beast. I've generally used uh, just a bottle. I had a an ancient bottle of uh, Windsor & Newton. I, I call it ancient because it was over a decade old before it started like drying up to the point that I can't use it anymore. This is really fine too, but I'm concerned that's still not fine enough to go ahead and do the stripes for this, this cat. Uh, I think... Uh, I think I want to give it a go, though. Because I'm thinking that, uh... If I don't start doing that, at least... I'm not gonna get anywhere on this prompt today. Which is... Crazy! It is mind-boggling to me, because I was so, so excited to get started on this prompt. Like, the Cheshire Cat, he's just so classic, so much fun, and here I am just blah, <laughs> trying to figure it out. So this will probably go horribly wrong because I've not used these uh, fine liners. Uh, we're going to do a quick test on the swatch here. I kind of want to see like a general idea as far as flow rate, but yeah, that that speed is so much bigger. It looks like I'm going to have to do the application with a uh, with like a toothpick or something instead. I I think I might give it a little more control because this once you have it le leaning down it's kind of going to go everywhere. I don't feel like I have enough control to do that well right this second. Well, this is turning out anticlimactic, isn't it? Like the cat's just sitting there taunting me. So, instead of uh, doing what I thought I was going to do with laying down those washes, I'm going to very delicately try to paint around because I feel like masking fluid is not the answer for me today. I want to make sure that this is fairly thin.
And really, I want to have the option to go back in darker later on. You have to forgive me for uh, randomly getting quiet because it is still allergy season, unfortunately. Well, for me, I have indoor and outdoor allergies, so really, allergy season never ends. It's just how bad is it that particular day? This is just wild. Got all excited. Yeah, you know I'm gonna leave that that shading go. It's fine. Just do a wash over. Come back. Plot it, blend it. This will help convey some depth. It's not going to be perfect. Few things in life are perfect. So, it will. Let's just see where I get on this cat. This both frustrating and yet somehow not surprising that I stalled out like that. I'm trying to keep these edges kind of soft. as I can with itty bitty details and I should zoom back in see what's going on now that I've decided to just move ahead and start laying some paint down. I'm just grabbing the very slightest little bit of, uh, of that paint gray. And I'm realizing here, I still have a center line from where I was kind of gesturing the pose, kind of indicating where the Cheshire Cat's spine was. I'm just gently going over that before I have any, any areas right there that are wet. Right now it's just the top of the head and arm and the one side. Should be moved. I am leaving that part of the belly at least lighter than the rest. I don't know if I'll go in and, and make the whole body uh, like a really light gray and then just darken the sides to convey form or or what. I, I, <laughs> like I said, for being so excited about this character, I feel like I am going into this like woefully unprepared. And that's that's annoying. I think it's frustrating sometimes. But you know what? We will figure it out as we go. Also doing some really gentle outlining. And that's just so I can go ahead and remove all the stray pencil lines later. I'm trying to, because we are getting so far into this month, I really am trying to remove pencil anywhere possible. In early thoughts of, you know, getting this finished. Right now, it barely looks like I've done anything. Because I'm basically reinforcing what I did with the graphite.
So I'm curious to know who your favorite character is in Alice in Wonderland. Just to make a bit of outlining around the tail. And then I'm going to go back and bring that in a little further to do some shading. One of those. I start thinking about line work. I tend to focus on the line work, and then I think of shading as a separate thing. I mean, there's some cases where I'll do the same, the, the, do both steps at the same time because I can imply some shading with the line work. That is some seriously subtle shading. I think I'm going to gently do a line on this side of the paw. Well, I should say forearm. We have an anthropomorphized cat here. A uh, brief moment for sniffling. Yay. And I've gone ahead and switched over to the neutral tint. Think I can help to convey some shadow here. Hope that shadow seems logical. I can go ahead and define that a bit better later. I went with the uh, neutral tint since that's what we use for the uh, the shadow of the hat over here. I didn't go over the whole edge of it. I'm realizing that I can erase some pencil lines. So we have a cat who does not have any stripes. So frustrating. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What do you guys think of purple and green? Maybe the uh and the Payne's Gray is more of a uh, just indication of shadows. Or some some purple. So now I've got to thinking. We've got some purple and green. Maybe the uh, Payne's Gray is actually a shading layer to help indicate where those shadows are. And maybe steer this color more towards purple. I also don't want it to look like he's a weird knockoff of the Joker or something. Nice. Isn't it fun when you go to look for your paintbrush and you find out that it's uh, stuffed behind your ear? Like, you silly person. I'm 
Mm, right now I'm cleaning up a little bit on my palette. They had... I don't know what random color was on this little edge here. But I want to get rid of it. So I have a straight mixing spot between the phthalo blue turquoise and the phthalo green blue shade. I think if I'm going to go with um, going with a, a green tone, I'm definitely going to shift it at least a little bit to the blue side. Be a little more harmonious with some purple. I think part of my hesitation with some of this is my brain is slightly off elsewhere. I have a couple of uh, couple time sensitive projects that aren't quite where I wanted them to be. So um, I'm also finding myself distracted with that while I'm uh, doing this. So this is an absolute joy and so are the other projects. It's just switching gears between them sometimes takes a little longer than I'd like. So, um... Oh, that's where that puddle is. I still have some of the, uh... That color I mixed before. Excellent. For the Mad Hatter's hat. I have a puddle of that still sitting. Alright. So... I'm grabbing a healthy dollop of water. Mix into that puddle because I did go really strong with that color here. And also that it is a dried puddle. So I'm re-wetting it as well as uh, wanting it to thin it out. I love that color. That's such a pretty color. I am kind of digging this together with that, and then I can go a little bit deeper with the, uh, what would I go deeper with? With the shadow color? I mean, I'm glazing it over to the Haynes gray, but oh, definitely not. Had to go ahead and grab the, uh, early, um, violet. I was like, hmm, definitely not the right, right, right way to bend that. So the, um, the glaze of the Haynes Gray. Probably about right for what I want to do. That could work. Could also go in with the um with a deeper hue of the dioxazine violet. Which your color is right here. It goes quite dark quite easily. It's very, very ready to be a shadow color. So if I need to push a little bit more vibrancy in some spots. It looks like I need to strengthen that wash a bit. Oh, I'm kind of digging it. It's kind of a uh, little crossover of like best of both worlds thing. Go ahead and uh, 
some color on this cat. Which now leaves me with what color for the inside part of the ears. You go with the touch of the uh excuse me, um uh, I lost my train of thought. I'm uh, probably going to go with uh, maybe a touch of the coral in the similar color that I used for inside the uh, white rabbit's ear. And I'm in a debate on. There should be stripes on the side of the face. I think I lightly drew at least one of them to wrap around. I'm gonna try to show up about some of these debates so uh, we can get some color on this guy. Yeah, last night was interesting. I started reading a book about uh, creating outlines for writing and reread the short story that I did for, for a class assignment. I'm really excited to go ahead and get back into that world. So that's one of the, uh, the consuming thoughts at the moment. I reread that story thinking, like, okay, where do I need to change? Because I've been stuck as far as the next part. I'm realizing that the way the part is, like, uh, I, I feel like the characters were pretty good, the story was pretty good. Of course, I can change things as need be because it doesn't need to be within the confines of an assignment anymore so that can become whatever it needs to be which I feel better about that part now that I'll be able to expand quite a bit I like the uh the emotional pull was still there when I reread it. And this is. Uh, I worked on that assignment almost a year ago now, so. I find that to be a good thing, like stepping away from writing for a while and coming back to read it, so that way you have a fresh view on it. And now that there's not enough pigment, there we go. I'm trying to curve some of these. Hopefully, convey some sense of form with how they're uh, how they're twisting around. I think I am going to do stripes across the side of the face. That feels right. Just very gently. If I can get enough pigment and water. My little puddle is already starting to dry just a touch.
I was thinking I would do another straight, but that looked balanced on the face. I'm gonna leave it at one on each side. I feel like once I lay in some of these uh, purple glazes, that that's gonna work really well. Which, now that I have an idea for that, I'm going to go with a um, probably the quin coral. So I want my cat to have some toe beans. I specifically drew little toe beans and I want them to have a decent bit of contrast with the rest of the body. I'll just do that. This might be more pink than I need it to be. Because I'm just thinning it. I can go back in and mute the color later. For now. I'm going fairly full strength on that. And I'm grabbing the spotter brush that's not even wet. Just shove that pigment around a little bit on the nose. And it's funny to see a spotter brush actually seem thirsty. <laughs> but that's exactly what it did there. Alright, just a quick check on my phone, make sure I didn't have any messages. And the chat is going well. Alright. So back to this news. Little dot. And that little dot is on the number one brush, and then I'm coming back in with the spotter. Just to go ahead and spread that pigment a little bit. It is very dainty. It's weird when the spotter brush seems like it's going to be a bit big. I'm just doing a little dot at the center of the ear. And uh camera and it's auto crap man. Messing with everything. Okay, so that's not quite grabbing that pigment as much as I want. Got a little bit of water on this butter. Just to help pull that pigment up a little bit more. I'm going to rinse out the number one brush, and I'm going to go in with color on the spotter, because I want more pigment for the yellow toe beans. I know it is an absurd amount of detail to have on a character that is this far into the composition. But I'm not going to waste an opportunity for two beans. It is something I very specifically set out to include. He's got two beans. Right now the eye area is not very well defined. I feel like when I was working on him, I was just... Like... My lead for the pencil is just so thick and gigantic, and I was just not getting the detail that I wanted. So, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to do the the slits for the cat's eyes. And then I can just go around that with my, my detail brush, and that should be fine, because that spotter brush is absolutely tiny. If worse truly came to worse, I can actually go ahead and break out my, uh... Break out a, uh... A cat's whisker to go ahead and detail some paint uh, because I've been keeping them when I find them uh, because our roommates have cats and 
strangely enough, with this many cats, you don't find whiskers very often. But I was glad to find a couple, and it's great to have that option. So heading back to the number one brush. I think it is still within the realm of me being able to do the color that I want. As far as colors, I am going to do the uh, the oxazine violet, which I need to clean off some palette space for. And so, temporarily grabbing the uh, number eight round, just to go ahead and clear this area. I don't know what these mixes are. I don't need them right now. They don't need to be on my palette. It's a pretty color. Sometimes I just have a specific idea in mind, and that is a good time for me to swap out color on my palette if need be. I don't try to wait on something to decide that. Those were probably colors I used in painting some cherry blossoms, along with a little bit of a twin violet. Yeah, seeing how how big that little drop is. I mean, it is a little drop, but it's still not as fine as where those stripes would be for the, the Cheshire Cat, so I am glad that I I stuck to my guns on that one. Just grabbing this to go ahead and blot in my palette. And holy cow, we are at time. <sighs> hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I think I'm gonna go just a touch over on time. I want to try to lay in. Just a little bit of that color, at least on the face. So, right now, just grabbing a little bit of the Carbazol Violet. Again, that's Dioxazine Violet or Dioxazine Purple or Windsor Purple, depending on which brand you have. But the uh, pigment code is uh, PV23. Yes, PV23. It's one of the ones I have on my uh, my swatch sheet over here. Um, that's a great mixing color. Great, so I have a bit of the acronym lilac, so I'm going to just work on making a nice little puddle of the two combined for a nice pinkish purple. I want it far enough to where it is most certainly purple. But I don't want it so dark as the uh, the regular Carbazol Violet. Just a quick, <laughs> quick test. I think that'll work. Yeah, I think it'll work. Alright. However, I'm going to skip this track. It's going a little bit, uh... A little more insane than I want to know. Alright, and then... Tomorrow, uh, the prompt is Tweedles. 
so that'll be fun because I'm not quite positive where they go. I might do Tweedles here, Talking Flowers here. I might do it the other way around where the Talking Flowers are here and the Tweedles are over here. But it'll be just enough where uh, they have some space where I have the, the edge of her uh, sticker. In the case of the Cheshire Cat and the hat, um, what I'm going to do with that is just do a... Uh, uh, do that as one solid sticker instead of two separate elements because of the way they're interacting with each other. It's one of those I'm... I have kind of mixed feelings about that. I feel like this color is a little bit strong right now. So what I'm currently doing is just trying to draw that out as thin as possible in this area and give me Plenty of space around these stripes. And I'm drying off the brush. And soften this edge. And then in softening the edge, coming back and removing the pigment down the belly. I'm kind of liking that, which is good. I'm glad. Trying to stay light on the pigment. I don't want that running too much. And I just want enough to indicate the line between the stripes. Go back over this edge, adding a touch more pigment to these edges. Definitely doing this all as separate elements. I'll have torso. I'll come back and do the legs. Go ahead and do the face. I want to do that very gently. I feel like my brush is very dry. I feel like my brush is a little too wet. So, quick rinse of the brush. And I can very gently blend this edge. I need to give myself plenty of room because I still need to put in more detail in the face. And with the brush still being fairly dry, doing some subtle. Across the bottom of the face.
And we're going for a water mix of the paint thin out, which too much. Alright, and then just doing a quick blot. You have to let me know what you guys think of them. That is zoomed in as far as I can. I'm going to glaze over that really quick and light. Where of the watery mix. And go ahead and run this other paw. I'm definitely going to have to lay in some more glazes. Go ahead and define the shadow areas. Jeez, oh, we're almost 15 minutes over. Uh, I want to have a little bit of color on all of them before we're done for the day. Or at least done for today. Okay, so I'm just trying to for the. Slightest bit of a glaze. And that's gone a bit darker than I found. And that's gonna be our rays. There we go. Um, I really, really, really try to stick with the uh, the hour, but I was so stuck for color today. I just didn't want to leave us off like that. And at least you did get to see some detail on the white rabbit happening too, so. Progress! Progress on camera even. Hopefully it was interesting, and uh, hopefully you'll join me for the Tweedles tomorrow. So I think uh, our treasure cat's getting into a good spot. I will likely uh, just attach more of a glaze as my daughter is getting louder with this gaming thing. I'm going to indicate a little bit more form. Alright, and a touch darker on the tail. I know, 
right now I gotta leave this alone, otherwise the stream's never gonna end. But we have part of a Cheshire cat. <laughs> Almost there. Make, making progress. I'm, I'm glad with making progress. So, um, hopefully you'll join me tomorrow and we'll, we'll go ahead and get uh, those Tweedles positioned in. As always, cute painting. <laughs>